Welcome back to Black Bear Forge. Today I think we will try a relatively simple project. I thought we'd make a little cabinet pole. And I'm thinking of a fishtail or a whale's tail style cabinet pole. I thought I'd actually experiment with two different starting points. For one of these I will use a piece of three quarter inch square bar. And for one I'll use a piece of half by one inch flat bar. And both will make kind of a flared fishtail that then scrolls up to be the pole so you can kind of get under it with your fingers. In both cases they'll need a threaded hole in the back to put a screw through the inside of the drawer to hold them. So without further ado, let's head over to the forge. Let's get some material hot and see what these look like. I think I'll start with the three quarter inch square bar. We'll do it first. Because I want this pull to have a very gentle curve across the top and a nice radius on the inside as it tapers in here, I want to work a, over a fuller right here. So I'm going to use this big bottom fuller to start with. And I'm essentially going to be using half face blows on the fuller start drawing that all out and I'm going to draw it widthwise with the pin of the hammer simultaneously. So the pin is actually half on and half off. It needs to be good and hot. You see we're getting a nice spread. Now how thin and how wide you want this is just up to what you want to see for your particular knob. It's just a little bit off, so straighten it out. And you can even it up at the face of the anvil. Now I think I'm going to do a little bit of filing or grinding just to make sure that's a nice straight, even edge there before I roll this over. Mostly I just want to make sure there are no sharp spots that might snag somebody, no sharp edges. The shape I'm pretty happy with. After grinding this, I decided it could stand to be just a little bit thinner. As long as I don't create any new sharp edges, we should be just fine. I'm going to switch to a sharper fuller here, smaller diameter. I'm going to start rounding this up on here. That's 
starts the very nice round so we don't end up with a kink in this. Now remember, you want to be able to hook your fingers under this pole to open the drawer, so you don't want to wrap this scroll so tight you can't do that. So we just want to gently scroll it up, try and keep it round, and leave something you can kind of hook a finger under. We'll wait till it cools to actually test it. That's really fairly quick and simple to do. We will still need to check it and make sure it's got a comfortable grip on it, cut it off from the bar, then drill it and tap it. But while that cools, I thought we would try the half by one inch version and go ahead and put it in the forge and get it hot and we'll drill and tap them both at the same time that way. Let's head over to the little giant power hammer to draw this one out. Well, that certainly makes the first step go a lot faster. So now it's just a matter of cleaning this up. I'll probably do a touch of filing or grinding on it as well, but that's just up to how smooth you want that edge. The main thing is that it's not sharp. Well, really, I'm liking this one quite a bit here. Now we can scroll this up just like the other one. That's pretty good. And we're going to let that cool. We'll cut them both off. And then we'll make a way to actually mount them. The little porta band is a great way to cut these off. So essentially that's our, our little knob, one out of three quarter bars, a little bit heavier, you get three fingers on it to open the drawer. Now these can be a little bit tough to get clamped up under the drill press, but if you've got a nice straight edge here, that indexes in your drill press vise pretty well, and then a little spacer should do the trick. Some of you machinists out there may have some better ideas for how to do this. This is still a little bit fiddly, but I think that's going to work. Put a nice center punch mark in there. Now we want to drill this for a machine screw. I think a number 10 screw is just the way to go. Now I can never remember drill sizes for most of these. The ones I use all the time I can, but I can look it up right here. A number 1024 is a number 25 drill bit. And I also have this little gauge that's a metal version of the same chart. And I keep a set of bits that have all of the numbered, lettered, and fractional drill bits in here. 
And you want to drill this deep enough to get plenty of threads in so it holds securely. But don't drill it so deep that it uh, comes all the way out the curve of your bend here. Just hit that briefly with a countersink to make sure there's not a little burr. This drill press vise seems like a good way to hold these. So I'm just going to leave it right in there and just clamp that to my workbench. I've got a tap of the right size here. Now these little taps are easy to break, so make sure you use oil and make sure that you're backing it out every now and then to break the chips off so it doesn't bind up. This would be an ideal place for a bottoming tap, which unfortunately I do not have in this size. But I would start it with this tapered tap, and then before I get to the bottom of the hole, I'd switch taps to the bottoming tap, and it'd go right flat to the bottom of the hole and cut just slightly more threads in the same depth hole. That looks like about as far as I'm going to go, though. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven and a half full threads. So that's really pretty good. And as I typically do, I'm going to put a little bit of paste wax on these. I did heat them back up in the forge. They aren't this hot from drilling and tapping. And we'll let those cool a little bit. Wipe the excess wax off. And that is pretty much a finished project. Of course, it's always a good idea after you're done waxing these to run the tap back in just to make sure you don't have any blobs of wax down in there that are going to keep the screw from going in. And then the screw should just go right in. And these are 1024 machine screws. And you'll need to provide screws that are the right length for the thickness of the drawer. Obviously a one inch thick drawer is going to need longer screws than a half inch thick drawer because these don't go in that far. You've only got about three-eighths of an inch worth of screw going into this pole, so you can't have an inch worth of adjustment out of that. Seems obvious. But I've been told by an engineer that it only takes three threads to develop full strength on a threaded faster. I don't know if that's really true or not. It seems like you ought to have more, but that's what he went to school for, so I guess we can trust him. And these both go in four or five full turns before they bottom out. So there we have two little whale tail or fish tail cabinet knobs. They're each slightly different because we started with different starting stock. So it just gives you an idea of how you can do some test pieces to decide what size material you might want to use to start a project with. Both of these are completely useful. I like both of them. I think I like the larger out of three quarter stock better. It's got just a little bit more grip space. But if it's a smaller cabinet, this one would work fine. That's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Love it if you hit that subscribe button. Stick around, watch a few of the other videos. Share the videos with your friends. If you would like to support the channel financially, there are links to both Patreon and PayPal down in the description. That is simply a donation. The content will remain free. But then I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, use your creativity, challenge yourself, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.